Good day, it's Ben Hyde here at BCC Hardware, and today we're taking a look at the TP-Link AC5400X. Uh, this is their Archer series router, and uh, we're just taking a look at this beast of a router to see what all kind of differentiates itself from other routers uh, on the market today. So we're going to quickly run through the interface here and uh, take a look. And this this will be a few minutes, but we'll we'll blast through some of the some of the real highlights and uh, carry on from there. So right off the bat, as soon as you log in, you have this nice basic tab. Uh, the first time you log in, of course, you've got a quick setup option. Um, but for now, we're just going to run through. Uh, if you're doing a manual setup or just to be more familiar with the router itself. Again, this is the Archer C5400X. This is their gaming series. They're, they're multiple user, multiple input, multiple output, tri-band gaming router. It's kind of their big dog. And as you'll see, it's incredibly, incredibly well set up. So uh, after the initial status page there, you've got your internet options, uh, which include, of course, st static, dynamic, uh, PPPoE. Um, LT2 or L2TP and so on and so forth. You can clone your PC MAC address. You know, it's all standard stuff. Now under the wireless option here, um, right off the bat, you've got some just some basic settings here. And what I really like under this basic tab is the fact that you can name your SSIDs. Uh, you can enable it or disable it if you only want five gigahertz. It's just a checkbox. Name your SSID. Uh, throw your password in there. Save done all in one page. There's not a bunch of other settings and, and a bunch of stuff to have to do to make this work for you. It just works straight up out of the box. Simple one page to set up all your wireless access points. Uh, fantastic. Of course, this is the basic. We're going to get into advanced a little bit later. Now on the USB side of things, um, you've got options for USB storage device. We don't actually have anything plugged in right now. Um, and and the print server as well. Uh, and again, it just works as the uh, just you plug it in, shows up on the network, and and it and it works and it works very well. Um, we have tested that, but for now, just as I'm blasting through this, I realize I didn't plug anything in. But you know, it, it's as simple as you know the, the device is connected. We'll we'll scan it. We'll you know assign an IP. What type of FTP interface do we want? Do we want it shared on the network? Uh, that sort of thing works very well. Print server function. Also, same thing. If you have the print server on, plug a printer in. Done. If you need, you know, fancy USB printer control utility, you can do that um, on their tested device here. It actually worked without the software. Uh, if you knew the IP of it, it would just set it up as an IP printer, and you're good to go. One feature here that I kind of really like, as far as a is a consumer side of things, is this home care setup here. So we've got our parental controls. Um, super cool. Kids aren't real happy with that because we've got some some things here. You can set up different profiles. The basic info. You can add devices. Um, just just you know, pick add a device. Choose a device from your network. Whatever you want to do. I mean, we've got 12 pages of them here that have been connected. So you, you pick your device that you want. Uh, add it. Say, okay, what kind of filtering level do we want? And uh, so we add that. You know, whether you can do prearranged stuff uh, or and then you've got time controls so we can actually say you know, Monday to Friday we want two hours now keep in mind that this is two hours of the device connected to the network not just internet time so if the PC is on it will be connected and therefore the timer will be running my kids found that out and were very upset when they leave their computers on uh, get home from school and their internet access time had ran out I thought kind of funny they didn't think so much. So, and you can, you know, you specify this this one profile, but you can actually, after you have the one, you can sit there and you can add a different one. You know, name it something else, set up a whole different slew of parental controls, and they work really, really well. Uh, on the quality of service side of things, you've got application priority or device priority. You can specify which device gets gets the most priority or not, um, or applications as well. You know whether you're running chat or you're streaming video, gaming, custom. You choose what you want, and also it's kind of kind of nifty um, that this has Trend Micro built in. So you've got you know intrusion protection, uh, you've got malicious content filter, infected device quarantine. I've actually never never experienced a website where this actually flagged and and caused an issue on the router level. Uh, you know, but it's there, and you can actually look through the history here and see. You know, there has been some stuff that's blocked. Uh, so that's that's really cool. Some you know d denial of service stuff that it's actually blocked. So 
kind of kind of nifty that that's built into a consumer level router. Now on the guest network side of things, you can uh, allow guests to access each other, uh, to allow guests to access the local network, which to me makes no sense uh, on a guest network. You want to just isolate it to the internet, but you, you know you have that option as well. Um, you can hide the SSIDs, leave them available, uh, set up passwords for them if you wanted to, uh, or you can just you know leave them open and and just straight you know internet connected. On the TP Link Cloud side of things, um, this is where you set up your, you know, your, you can log into it from anywhere. You don't just have to be locally connected here. Uh, with TP Link Cloud, I can actually log in, you know, on the web to TP Link Cloud's interface and, and manage my router that way. Uh, nothing that is really necessary on a day-to-day -day basis, but you know, it, it may be handy to check things or if you're away and you want to change some parental controls or realize that, hey, you know what, I want to shut the Wi-Fi off while I'm gone. You can actually log in remotely, uh, change those settings, apply them, and, and you're good to go. Now on the advanced side of things, it's it's the basic but just like wide open. This is so cool what is available to, to see and to view and to monitor. So our status page is much, much longer uh, than the previous one. You know, we've got all of our internet settings and of course you can check the status of, of these different networks to see what's going on as well. Um, the number of wire clients, you know, even the names of them and everything. It's just very robust even on the status page here uh, on the C5400X from TP-Link. Now on the network side of things, uh, it gets even a little bit more in-depth. I mean, internet is, is basically, you know, kind of the same thing, but what is neat um, and not typical on a consumer level router for, you know, main, mainstream consumers is WAN aggregation. Um, so now we've got the ability here to have load balancing uh, or on, on your router. So you can actually have multiple ISPs or two connections and it will actually, you know, aggregate the traffic on the WAN port. Not something you see in day-to-day in -day routers, which is pretty cool. On the LAN side of thing, um, you know, again, we've got link aggregation now. Uh, if you've got, let's say, a uh, an ASUS store NAS that supports link aggregation or different devices that, you know, support link aggregation. So now suddenly you can have a uh, two gigabit connection to your NAS server. This router supports that as well. So you can actually have WAN aggregation as well as uh, link aggregation on the LAN side of things, which totally, you know, is, is another reason why this router has so many ports uh, compared to standard routers. So that's just kind of extra cool feature there. All right, so now IPTV um, just, you know, it has some settings there. Fairly standard, a little bit more robust maybe than some, but, you know, fairly standard stuff. DHCP server is... You know, there's there's nothing nothing new or weird there. You got your client list. Uh, you can actually you know reserve Mac by, by Mac addresses and different things there. Again, that that's nothing new. We're just running through this here. Dynamic DNS again, nothing exciting or new there. Static routes are also available. Um, and, and that's not necessarily new, but it is very very straightforward and laid out very well. Moving along here to the operation mode, we've got this. This isn't really new. Um, but it, it's not as easily accessible on different routers. So you've got your, your router mode, standard, everything comes in, but you also have access point. Um, so you can connect to a wired or wireless router and extend the wireless coverage of your existing network. So, so what is cool about this, if you, if you really want to get a crazy, crazy wireless throughput, um, you can actually run this as an access point uh, and connect to a, another one of these, uh, a C5400X. In, in access point mode and link aggregate so I mean you could you could wired network to to the router and then run a crazy fast two gig like a solid two gigabit connection between the two well that that's what you would get um, on the consumer side of things on the you know on a wired connection but it's, it's amazing what this router is capable of and the ease at which it is set up so now onto the wireless things here on the advanced side of things you've got smart connect a uh, nice feature if you want to, you know, quickly connect your devices, that's an option for you as well. Um, here you can choose your encryption, the, the basic setting, you just, you know, you just entered your SSID, password, done. Here you've got some more options for the, the different networks that this is running as well. Um, you can turn wireless protected setup on or off. 
Um, you can actually have a, a pin as well. So you've got router's pin and a client's pin. You can actually do some different things uh, to increase the security because th the fact is that WPS is not the most secure thing in the world. Um, and uh, TP-Link has tried to step things up a little bit. Um, one thing that's kind of nifty too is that it has a built-in wireless uh, off time schedule so you can actually um, just disable your wireless at a certain time of day uh, you can you know it's just, just nice to do if if at night you don't want to have wireless for for whatever reason uh, or during the day you don't want to have wireless you can actually just you know choose choose the time of day we're gonna say from you know 7 a.m. to to noon for some reason we want uh, no wireless boom done hit save now you don't have a wireless network from those times on the guest network side of things here it's almost exactly the same as the basic settings there's not much things to be advanced or basic about wireless uh, guest network allow access to each other you know local network and then you know this this type of thing here with your SSIDs and stuff USB uh, sharing here the only addition to this um, it's it's a carbon copy of the basic settings except under advanced it allows us to run Apple's time machine software as well so uh, we can enable time machine if you've got Apple devices that's your ecosystem this supports that as well uh, parental controls all exactly the same here as well um, you know nothing nothing more advanced about this on the, than on the basic side it's all there um, QoS as well too this is this is all exactly the same as basic on the security side of things, um, it looks, I guess, a little bit different. We've got the antivirus. Uh, we've got our firewall options here. Um, access control. We can, you know, turn it on so we can blacklist everybody or whitelist everybody. Um, deny new connections. Um, that sort of thing. So that's, again, very basic. Uh, as far as simplistic, the interface setup is, is very good. Um, yeah, it, it just it works well. So here, too, of course, we can uh, bind... Uh, IPs and MAC addresses and and that sort of thing here as well. On to the uh, NAT forwarding side of things, I mean, there's there's a lot of different options uh, here. You've got your virtual servers that you can run and and port. So now, if we're running uh, a Teamspeak server locally, if we're running a different FTP server, if we're running uh, you know a, a game server or specific things that we want to allow out, um, we've got all these. You know, we can open in different ports, so we can port tunnel too, so it's just not opening port 21, which for FTP, which a lot of ISPs block, we can actually map that to something else and then, then dish it back to the port we need on the inside of our network. Um, port triggering, again, nothing really new or interesting here. Uh, DMZ, UPnP, all fairly basic for uh, for routers of you know every brand, but uh, again, TP-Link gives you easy access to that. Uh, it does, of course, everybody anymore supports IPv6. Um, yeah, I, I've turned that off because it does allow some some extra complications on print servers, I've noticed, uh, for different customers. So I've disabled that for now, And uh, yeah, but that is available if, if you need it as well. So it does support VPN uh, built in. It supports the OpenVPN protocol as well as uh, PPTP. And uh, then you can see what VPN connections are are currently being used. It's nice that that they support the OP, Open VPN protocol, as it's kind of one of the more popular ones. And you used to be able to hack that in with DDWRT on some Linksys routers, but uh, TP-Link has said, you know what, we're just going to support this right out of the box, and it's going to work, and, and it does. So now on to something that's kind of interesting here is the fact that this router will integrate with Amazon Alexa as well as uh, IFTTT. Uh, protocols as well and so what's kind of nifty about this um, you got to set up the TP link uh, the tether app at first and then you can control Amazon Alexa with it so with Amazon Alexa uh, you have to you know install the software uh, the, the skill rather in your Amazon uh, Alexa your echo device but then the amount of the amount of controls and, and the amount that this of, of skills this has is pretty Amazing. We're going to try and find out the, the skill list here. Yeah, there we go. So, um, with our current router that we have, we can tell you know Alexa just different ways, you know, with night mode, um, with the LEDs on it, with uh, WPS. You can let you know just tell her to enable it to set it so that way you don't have to go push the button. 
um, guest network on and off speed test. Um, so as far as QoS, I mean, you can turn on, and these are all the different words and phrases that you'll understand um, to basically enable all these different QoS modes, um, turn off application priorities, prioritize devices, stop prioritizing devices, all of that is available uh, through the uh, Amazon Alexa skill, and this router actually supports that. So that's kind of nifty, kind of gimmick, really not really adding value necessarily to the router. I don't think that's why someone's going to buy the uh, TP-Link Archer C5400X is for that, but if you're going to buy this anyhow, kind of a value-added bonus right there. So under System Tools, I mean, again, you can set the time, have it set automatically. You've got your LED controls. It's got LEDs on it. You can make it nice and dark so it doesn't bother you, or even schedule the nighttime. If you like the lights during the day but want it quiet at night, there you go. Um, diagnostics include just ping, trace route, uh, yeah, and, and there on and there forth. You can back up and restore your settings. Automatically schedule reboots, which I guess maybe is is necessary. I haven't had this as an issue where I've had to have a router crash. Uh, ever since the early days of uh, Linksys, I haven't had this issue. So, um, But if, if you're having issues, you can have it reboot every every week, every day, whatever you want to do. Um, on the administration side of things, you can enable remote management or, or not. Um, currently, we have that turned off. And then, of course, you've got your system log and your traffic monitor and all sorts of wonderful nifty features of this. I, li I like traffic monitor. I like graphs. It does kind of a nifty job of showing what's going on. So this is a quick blast through the Archer uh, C5400X from TP-Link. This is their high-end AC5400 router that supports, I mean, so many different features, parental controls, QoS, um, Amazon Alexa skills. It's pretty, pretty darn nifty. Uh, and and powerful for the router that you can get from TP-Link. The performance is fantastic, uh, and the feature set is phenomenal. I'm Ben Hyde at BCC Hardware. Have a great day.